On December 27, 1892, Livingstone and Biddle College, now known as Johnson C. Smith University, played in Salisbury, North Carolina, with Biddle winning 5-0. Over time, HBCU football has evolved. HBCU football's popularity continues to rise. Millions attend games each year and millions more watch on television. The HBCU bands provide some of the top entertainment in the country. Over that time, some of the best players to ever play in the National Football League played at HBCUs. Every Monday through Friday on the HBCU Football Daily Podcast, national radio and television host Donald Ware takes a look at what's happening in HBCU football and talks with coaches, players, administrators, and media about the season. Make sure you join the conversation on social media now. Here's your host, Donald Ware. This is the HBCU Football Daily Podcast for today, Tuesday, August 8th. I'm Donald Ware. The countdown continues as we are now 18, count them, 18 days away from the start of the HBCU football season. So I hope you enjoyed on yesterday the SIAC preview. Of course, you can give me your thoughts on our Twitter page at box to row B-O-X-T-O-R-O-W. Today, I'm going to give you my annual list of the top players to watch for the season and this list is is not necessarily the best players in HBCU football although some of the best players in HBCU football and college football for that matter are on this particular list I'm going to give you three or I'm going to give you a couple or, or one or two uh, perhaps that maybe perhaps maybe should maybe uh, should be on this list, um, but I'm going to give you some reasons as to why they're not. And then I'm going to give you three of the five in no particular order. And then the last two, I'm going to give you as number two and number one. So here we go. W one of the young men not making this list is Jada Byers, the running back from Virginia Union. Arguably, last year, the best running back in all of HBCU football I mean, he only had one game in which he did not rush for 100 or more yards. As a matter of fact, in that game, that was the first game of the season where he rushed for 98 yards. It was against Virginia Lynchburg. So I'm sure the coaching staff not wanting to put uh, too much on him. And by the way, he did the 98 yards on 15 carries. So that's in excess of six and a half yards per carry. I mean, he had a game where he had 319 yards rushing a game where he had 199 yards rushing, uh, two games where he had over 200 yards rushing for a total of 1,920 yards rushing, 5.1 yards per carry. He had almost 300 carries, 19 touchdowns rushing. He had an additional, an additional two receiving touchdowns on the season. He is not on my list. And the reason being, I mean, you know, I mean, he, how much more can he really do? I mean, I'm sure he can eclipse the two. He could eclipse the 2,000-yard rushing mark, but my goodness. I mean, you're looking at a young man that had 1,920 yards rushing and really in excess of 2,000 yards of all-purpose yards on the season. So uh, while he certainly is one of the best players in all of HBCU football, he's not necessarily – on this particular list. So let me give you the three. Um, and then I'm going to give you again, as I mentioned, the top two. So these three in no particular order, I'm going to go um, with Lubert Danilis. Uh, he is the defensive lineman for Benedict. Now this, again, if you, you heard me mention the, on the SIAC preview last on yesterday, I mean, this is a young man that can just get it done. He can get to the quarterback he has the tackles for loss. I mean, let's look at the numbers. I mean, let's just look at the numbers from last year. He had 14 sacks, 14 sacks on last year, 21, 21 total uh, uh, tackles for loss, 51 tackles on the season. Of those, 38 were uh, tackles, or excuse me, were solo tackles. He forced three fumbles and had four fumble recoveries. So, that's a guy that knows where the football is, whether it's on the ground, 
whether he's making a tackle, whether he's forcing a fumble. I mean, he knows exactly what's going on. And, I mean, he's going to have to be big this year. The difference with him this year is he can, he's going to see – he probably saw double teams last year, um, especially as the season progressed. So in some cases, you know, he's certainly going to see double teams, perhaps triple teams at times this year. So we'll see how those numbers look and how he can still affect a, a, a defense. But – some other guys are going to have to step in. And I think the key is if his numbers aren't there, if the other some other guys' numbers are there, then certainly he has done his job. You, job, you see the numbers. He is a preseason uh, HBCU All-America as well as an All-America from last season. Another young man to watch um, is, uh, is the young man from Alcorn State, uh, course Jarby and Howard um the running back and I think if you look at the numbers last year 1275 yards rushing 5.1 yards per carry he had 12 touchdowns on the season he was the workhorse um all corn state was really forced to throw the football a lot last year didn't get the quarterback play consistent quarterback play that it needed on last year so I think even with some consistent quarterback play and all corn states got some guys that can pull the trigger, even with that consistency, I think he's going to be <clears throat> even more of a threat. I think he goes for over 1500 yards this season. More importantly, I think because of his place could be an opportunity for all corn state to, ch to really challenge for that Western division crown. And then the other young man in my top five, um, but not the top two, but certainly in the top five, a young man that you need to be on the lookout for, for those that, because listen, in HBCU football, you have your four conferences. You have MEAC, SWAC, SIAC, CIAA. Uh, then of course, at the division one level, you have Tennessee State, Hampton, and North Carolina A&T, Tennessee State playing in the OVC uh, dash uh, 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 Big South or Big South Dash OVC uh, this year, as it's called. And you have both Hampton and A&T playing in the OVC. And a lot of times teams like Lincoln of Pennsylvania, uh, excuse me, Lincoln of Missouri gets lost or, you know, some other teams that are outside of those conferences. Well, West Virginia State is one of those teams. NCAA Division II team plays in the Mountain East Conference. Young man at quarterback, by the name of Donovan Riddick. Again, be on the lookout for that young man. Watch that name. Last year, 2,326 yards passing, 63% of his complete uh, uh, completion percentage, 20 touchdowns to only six interceptions. And then he also rushed for 499 yards on 121 carries. That's in excess of four yards per carry. He had another seven rushing touchdowns. In his career, he has thrown for over 5,000 yards. Back-to-back -back seasons, he's thrown for over 2,000 yards. So be on the lookout for Donovan, Rick, uh, Donovan Riddick, the quarterback for West Virginia State. And oh, by the way, um, listen, he he's a guy that if he plays well, and I don't have any doubt that he's going to play well because he's played well. He played well last year. He played well the year before. Listen, if you look at the last two seasons, he's thrown for over combined, thrown for over 4,500 uh, yards, 36 touchdowns to only 12 interceptions in the previous two seasons. No doubt in my mind he's going to have a, 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 a good season. And by the way, um, the MEC or the Mountain East Conference doesn't do a preseason um, all conference team, but if if it did, he 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 may be it is going to be one of two quarterbacks. I'll put it like that. That would be in that first team selection. So again, be on the lookout for Donovan Riddick. So again, Donovan Riddick, uh, Jarvian Howard, um, and then also I'm looking at Lubert Danilis. Uh, my top uh, the three through five, however you want to rank them in the top five. My number two player to watch, Davius Richard, the quarterback for North Carolina Central. I don't, listen, 
I've called the games. I've called at least one game of Davius Richard the last three seasons. In other, well, really, 2019, when he was third or fourth string quarterback for the Eagles uh, coming in, uh, 2021, and then last year. Okay. Um, so I've seen him play. I see what he can do. He's a dual threat guy, more of a passer, but can really run the football. He can really do both. And to me, he doesn't have anything to prove. Um, I think what he's done in three seasons at North Carolina Central is fantastic. But there's going to be some noise, and there's some noise, and I've heard this because I've been at various media days because I heard someone actually say to me, well, uh, Jackson State probably would have won that football game uh, against North Carolina Central last year if the tight end hadn't dropped the football wide open in the end zone. Well, maybe, okay, may, maybe that's true. Um, at the same time, the Eagles had an opportunity at the end uh, of regulation to win that game. So he doesn't have anything to prove, but somebody may say that. Say that. But let me give you the numbers. In three seasons, 6,814 yards, 52 touchdowns to 25 interceptions. He's also rushed for 1,396 yards and 26 touchdowns in his career. Now, last year, 2,661 yards, 25 touchdowns to 10 interceptions, completing 64% of his passes for his career. He's, he has a 58% completion percentage. Now, of course, you would want him to cut down on those turnovers, um, no doubt, in terms of the interceptions, and I think he will. Um, you know, I think the Eagles are poised to you know, a real opportunity to repeat as HBCU champs. Um, I, I I know that Trey Oliver is not going to, those guys are not going to be complacent. They lose some guys, no doubt about it, but that leader to have that guy in Davius Richard, a three-year starter coming into his fourth season and to still be in the program when the transfer portal is running rampant says something about um, Trey Oliver and that Eagle program. Okay, so he's number two. Number one for me is Jeremy Musa, the quarterback for Florida A&M, and here's why. Put up some solid numbers last year in his lone season in Tallahassee, okay? Very, very solid numbers. I'm going to read the numbers off uh, to you momentarily here, okay? He completed 226 of 394 passes. For 2,732 yards, he had um, right around a 60% completion percentage, 21 touchdowns to 10 interceptions. So he definitely wants to cut down on those interceptions. This is this is the thing, though. I mean, he's not he's not going to run the football. He's got negative yards rushing last year, so he's not going to run the football. He's going to pass the football. He's got a very a pretty good a good offensive line, um, to say the least. But this is the thing, second year in Willie Simmons's offense, um, you, you know, he 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 had a solid season and his numbers were good, but they weren't great. I don't think it was a great season. I think he's looking for a great season in 2022, second year in the in the offense. The other thing is this. I think there's a lot of pressure uh, on Florida A&M as a whole, at least as far as I'm concerned, the reason being. Look at the last couple of years, all of the Deion Sanders hype, all of the Jackson State hype, um, particularly coming into last year because Jackson State had come off that 2021 championship. And uh, it has been it had been Jackson State. Florida A&M would say, well, we got snubbed from the playoffs. I would say probably not. Not in two season. Yeah, but if you look at the schedule, not a strong schedule at all. So I think that if Florida A&M has some pressure, then I think the quarterback for Florida A&M, at least from an offensive perspective, has some pressure too, and that is Jeremy Musa. I think he'll do fine um, with the pressure, but but again, it's going to be a tough schedule because Jackson State, first up, it's not a gimme game. I mean, it may not be the same Jackson State team, 70 new players, a new uh, a, a new head coach, even though, you know, T.C. Taylor's with the, he's with, been with, Florida A or excuse me, Jackson State the last couple of years, but that's going to be a tough game. And if you lose that game, you're already behind 
in the Eastern Division. That's why you don't have generally conference uh, and, and specifically division matchups to start the season. So Florida A&M has to get out to the good start. I think there's some pressure there on the Rattlers, thus a uh, little bit of pressure there on Jeremy Musa. Um, but listen, proceeded to get better as the season progressed in 2022. So if he plays well, I think Florida A&M plays well. Thus, because of those reasons, he's my number one player to watch. So let's recap. Three through five, however you want to uh, rank these guys. Um, Jarby and Howard, the running back for Alcorn State. Lubert Danilis, the defensive lineman for Benedict. And Donovan Riddick, the quarterback for West Virginia State at number two. I've got Davius Richard, the quarterback of North Carolina Central at number one. I've got Jeremy Musa, the quarterback at Florida A&M. That's going to wrap it up for today's HBCU Football Daily Podcast. Of course, we want you to tell a couple of friends about the HBCU Football Daily Podcast, where you can watch us on the Box to Row YouTube channel. You can also listen and download the podcast at BoxToRow.com, also at iHeartMedia.com as well. You can give us comments on Twitter at Box to Row, B O X T O R O W. And follow us while you're there. Talk with you tomorrow. We hope you enjoyed this episode of the HBCU Football Daily Podcast. You can also listen to the podcast at BoxToRow.com, iHeartMedia, or wherever you get your podcasts. Don't forget to get your HBCU football fix on Box to Row with Donald Ware each weekend on the radio station near you and on Sirius XM on HBCU, Channel 142, and on ESPNU Radio on Sirius XM, Channel 84. Follow us on Twitter and Instagram at Box to Row for the latest in HBCU football and don't forget to tell a friend.